In this tutorial, we will learn how we can install Internet Information Services on Windows Server 2019. The Internet Information Services is a web service software or a web server created by Microsoft Corporation to be run on Windows NT environment that will support services such as HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, FTPS, and SMTP and several other services. To start installing, first go to Start menu, open Server Manager. This particular server has been promoted to a domain and the Active Directory domain controller has already been installed. If you would like to know how to install the Active Directory and promote your server to a domain such as this sanuja.local, there's another video that you, or you can watch and I will put a link to it. Once you have your domain installed and it is promoted in your server, go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. On the Add Roles and Features screen, click Next. Select Role Based or Feature Based Installation. Click Next. Select the server. In this case, you only should have one server, which is SSServe, which is this particular server. And click Next. And under the roles, select the option called Web Server, IIS. And it'll give you a pop-up asking you to add additional services. Make sure you select Include Management Tools if applicable and select Add features. Click next, click next, click next, and next. And in here, select restart destination server automatically if required. This will make sure that all the installation processes will be completed correctly and they will be ready to go once the restart is done if it is needed. And on the warning, click yes and press install. Once the installation has been completed, you'll get this message and then click close. On here, you will also get a message at the top saying the installation has been completed. Now, under tools, you should see a new option called the Internet Information Services Manager or IIS Manager. Click on that option and you, this will be your control center or a management center for the IIS server. At this time, the latest version is the IIS version 10 and this is what we have installed. Now let's see how we can install a website on this server. On IIS, you will see your main server as S, whatever you name it, in my case is SSL, and that will be your local host. And if you pull it down and uh, you keep expanding, you'll see the option called sites and you'll see the option called default website. I will discuss what is application pools, uh, what is sites and what, how uh, these uh, all come together. But just to see how we can build a basic website or basic web page on this server, you can go and check the option called default document. In the default document, you will see a couple of documents, default htm, default asp, index htm, index html, iisstart.html. What the default document section does is that when somebody requested the local host page, it will go and look for all of these pages in that order. Whichever the one it finds first will load as the home page.
when you first install your IIS server, by default, the IIS start.htm is in the folder for the localhost website. So if you go to um, Internet Explorer or any web uh, um, browser and you type localhost and press enter, it'll get you to your local web page. Also, if you go and check your IP address for the server and you enter the IP address of the server, which is 192.168.1.3 in this case, it will also get you to that local page that has been installed by default by IIS. We can change this page by changing the location um, document on the IIS server. These pages are located on the C drive under INETPub in www root folder. Currently, this IIS start dot htm document being loaded whenever you enter localhost or the IP address of the server. What you can do, you can replace this document or you can create a default document that will load in here. Just to show you the uh, a default document, uh, I'm going to create the document called htm, uh, sorry index.htm. So I'm not going to teach you how HTML work because that's not the primary uh, purpose of this uh, video. Uh, so I'm simply going to create a quick HTML page so that uh, just to show you that uh, the this thing actually works. So once I have a little bit of HTML code, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this in this folder. As a .htm file, so I'm going to call it index.htm. So how, what we're going to do next is that under default website, um, default documents, the index.htm is down here. So that means it's going to go and search for this document first, this document next, and next document next, and next, and next, and until it finds the one that matches, the first one that matches, and it displays. So to avoid that, that loop keep going into the next and next, what we're going to do, we're going to move this index.htm to the top. How you're going to do that is select index.htm and then we're going to click move up and you're going to say yes and you're going to click move up to the top. So now every single time the internal web page is requested, index.htm page will load. And in this interpub www root website uh, sorry we're on a folder the index page is the one that we want to load when somebody goes into our website so now go back to our uh, internet explorer and i'm going to reload this page there you go we have the main website and if you go to the ip address of the server and reload and it should load the same page as well so this is a basic web page that is running HTML and through HTTP and being delivered using your new Windows server. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to see how we can install a FTP site uh, on the same IIS platform. So first thing what we need to do, 
is close the IIS management tool. Go to manage and click add roles and features. This is because FTP is a separate feature within the IIS module. So just like before, under add roles and features wizard, click next. Select role based or feature based installation, click next. Select the server, click next. And under roles in IIS uh, web server, open the uh, drop down menu, the expand it and select FTP server. That will include FTP service and that will allow you to install the FTP protocol and the server under IIS. Then click next, next. Select restart destination server automatically if required as always and click install. Once the installation has been completed, close the window and open up IIS Manager. In IIS Manager, expand your server options from the left hand pane, expand the sites and you'll see that your HTTP site is still there. And then if you select the sites folder, on the right hand side, now you have a new option called add FTP site. Click on add FTP site and name the site whatever you like. In my case, I'm just gonna say sanuja-ftp. And you can select the path where the FTP site will be located. In my case, I'm simply gonna go to C and I will select int pub and I'm gonna put it into FTP root. But you can put it this FTP folder anywhere you like. I just selected the default path. And then click next. And we're gonna use port 21 and we are not going to use SSL at this time. I will explain how you can do SSL and security with port 443 later. And we're gonna click next. For authentication, I'm just gonna leave it blank for now and I will uh, set it up later and save me the authorization. And I'm gonna click finish. Now, unlike the website where we click bunch of stuff and it all ready to go, except the web page itself, we need to do a little bit of more configuration with FTP. So how are we gonna do it? We're gonna go to FTP site and in the authentication, I'm gonna enable the basic authentication. Then I will go to the authorization section of the FTP site and I'm gonna add a allow rule and I'm gonna allow all users both read and write access and I'm gonna click okay. This will give read and write access to all the users in your Active Directory domain uh, services under users and computers, the access to the FTP site. Then I'm gonna restart the FTP site just to make sure that everything is good to go. And if you open up your Internet Explorer and if you go FTP and your site, in this case 192.168.1.3 which is the local web address and press enter, you should get a pop-up say asking for a username and password. So I'm gonna use my administrator username and the password to log in. There you go. You have access to the FTP folder through Internet Explorer, which is currently running on IIS, the FTP site. On my next video, I will explain how we can add other security features 
both to the FTP site as well as the HTTP site. Until then, have a nice day.